it. So you can speak uh, Chinese? Yeah. Girl! Yeah. This, this ain't your average, <laughs> this ain't your average or typical, this is an exotic <laughs> one, okay? <laughs> It's your girl E and I'm back with another one. Now today we're not doing a review, we're actually doing our first episode of our podcast. Guess who we have today? We have a special <laughs> guest and her name is Tia, yeah. the princess of the islands. <laughs> so go ahead and give her a round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for being here, Dia. Thank you for having me. Yes, you know, we have one of the baddies here herself, and she's here to bless our podcast. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now, I know you guys have a lot of questions for Dia, just like I do. So, you know, let's go ahead and get into it. But before we do that, let's go ahead and take a cheers, you know. We got a baddie, baddie shot o'clock, you know I, what I'm saying? As, 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 as always. Period. <laughs> and we got some Bel Air. You know, mm -hmm. I have no idea how to open this. <laughs> Girl, I don't even know either. I lie. Thank you. I was trying to open one in the in the club that, and I had to let them open it. I think they wanted me to pop it, right? Yeah. And I was trying to pop it and make it like she's girl. That shit didn't even. Girl, it did not. I'm like, um, how do like do I need a first <laughs> Like, how do I open this? Like, I don't know. I don't even drink wine like <laughs> right? that. I just be on the tequila. Yeah. I was on the tequila on the way here. Casamigo. Girl. Yeah. So yeah, let's go ahead and pour a glass. Yes. Thank you. Wuzzy, 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 wuzzy. So cheers to your first episode. Cheers to I'm my so first episode. Thank you. Thank you for being here. She is so sweet, you guys. I already love her, so I see why the fans love her, okay? So cheers to cheers. first podcast. Period. <laughs> So good, Bel Air. I'm gonna need that sponsorship. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm gonna need y'all to sponsor oh, us, you know, cause we we here with the baddies. Like, <laughs> what you need? So let's go ahead and get into the questions because I know you guys are like so excited to get the 401 on Dia. So let's go ahead and get into it. So now I know we know you from like Baddies Caribbean, but we haven't really got the chance to know Dia like you know for who she is and outside of baddies caribbean mm -hmm. so go ahead and like tell us about yourself well i'm from the bahamas um mm -hmm. i am born bred dead from there um i've been doing music for about seven years basically from the bahamas so i've been pushing my music for a little while um i grew up there i went to school in china actually like um college i went to college in china so Nor I uh, in china Mandarin. normal university right yes okay. <laughs> i did my research <laughs> So you can speak uh, Chinese? Yeah. Girl! Yeah. This, this ain't your average, <laughs> this ain't your average or typical, this is an exotic one, okay? <laughs> yeah, so I went there for school. Um, it was, I always thought these plans to get rich or whatever, so I was, I was going to college in Nassau, but I was just like playing poker and hustling on the side, so I wasn't going to class and shit like that. So my daddy was like, um, they have this Chinese government scholarship given out. Maybe you should try to go to China because nobody, no Bahamian speaks Chinese. And we had this hotel opening up called Bahama, whatever. So I applied, went there with this whole plan. I'm gonna get rich. Finished with China, came back home, and I started a translations and trade company. Oh wow! Yeah, I started it when I was like, I think I finished China in like 23 or so. Anyway, started this translations and trade company, and. I wasn't really getting, a, I was getting a little bit of work here and there, but I wasn't getting as much work with the translations because, you know, being a female, young, pretty, mm -hmm. sometimes people stereotype you. They stereotype you. They think you're, like, when you're pretty, they just automatically assume that you're dumb. You're dumb. I'm so I love yeah. that she's telling you guys about this. Like, she has a bachelor's degree, and you <laughs> persevered. Yes. You persevered. Yes. You wrote the essays. You did mm -hmm. the work, and you mm -hmm. got the degree. Mm -hmm. So... So after that, I went home. So anyway, I closed the company, um, and then I had to get this this um, job at Bahama. So they gave me a job, front desk job. Girl, I worked that job for like four months, and I started in construction, a construction company, because my dad, he had a construction company, and I used to be with him from young. So he wanted to stop. So I rebranded the company and opened up a new company. Wow. And I got my first contract, so I left. Bahama because when I was at Bahama I was working there front desk and I was like cleaning houses on the side to like pay my rent and stuff mm -hmm. 
and so I started the construction company that was a few years back and then it just I started music in 2018 okay and I would use the construction to basically fund my music career and try to get out and stuff like that mm -hmm. and I just opened up more companies so now I have like five different businesses at home mm -hmm. that range in the construction businesses which is basically construction property management I have a cleaning business I used to clean as well mm -hmm. um, interior design and then um, architectural design as well so I have about five businesses back home but all of these I use like my profit to invest into my music as you should yes yeah, so I've been doing music for like seven years and I used to watch bodies and I would see like you know the girls promoting their platform stuff like that and I admired it and I always said like you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna go on bodies I used to tell my team that like I go on bodies I'm gonna do bodies yeah and before they dropped Bodies Caribbean, I had honestly got fed up because I was trying to apply for the one before, mm -hmm. and it was full. So I told my team, I said, you know what, we could do a Bad Gals in the Islands. We could do it on YouTube, mm -hmm. and we could do it to get um, Zeus's a, a, attention, attention yeah. to you know, <laughs> do a Bodies of the Islands yeah. type of thing. Then they dropped Bodies Caribbean, and I applied, and I was like, this must be God. So I went there, I packed my Jolly Bundle, yeah. I went there, like, yeah, I going to audition, boom. Yeah. I got there, I auditioned. I'm glad I was so nervous. I wasn't expecting to be casted because, you know, I'm from a small place. So I wasn't really expecting, like, for real, for real, but I was expecting it. Mm -hmm. And then I got called, I got called like four days before we had to be in Miami. And my team cried. Aww. They cried because it's been seven years of me just putting crying into this and, like, trying to get that attraction in the States. I had already had a song that blew up that took me on tour in Europe. Um, it was Sunday to Sunday with Charlie Black. Charlie Black's oh, wow. Jamaica. So you were touring Europe before Baddies? Before Baddies. Wow. I went on tour. I toured Europe um, for my song that blew, it blew up in like three months because my brother had died in 2021. Yeah. And Sorry to hear that. Thank you. Thank you. He was killed by the police and that kind of changed my direction. Um, and I was about to quit music, honestly. I was home eating Wendy's, getting fat as fuck. And they called me from Jamaica. They like, we want you on this song. And I was like, what? So I did the song three months. I was in Europe touring, um, and that's how I got into the international and island style music. I've been rapping for seven years, and then they, they heard my voice and they like, we think you could sing, like mm -hmm. try this, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I got on this record, and then after that, that's how I made the Princess of the Islands tape with the singing and stuff like that. So I'm very versatile with my music, um, and I put a lot of love into it. I love what I do, um, and I was very grateful to get on bodies because it did give me the exposure that I needed. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And I'm so happy for you, <laughs> honestly, you. because you have a really captivating story. And I just love to see, you know, black women like you who raise up from like, you know, nothing and make something out of their lives, you know? Thank so you. that's really inspirational. So for all the people and all the young the youngins who are watching, you know, this is a very inspiring story. Thank so, you. you know, definitely role model status, you know. Thank you. Just to add to that too, I actually did bodies too. I, I was pushed to do it as well because I've been fighting the justice for my brother case for like two years, for 2021. Yeah. So I would, after he died, I was like, okay, I got to push this music for real because if I get to a certain level where, you know, they can't control my reach, mm -hmm. then I could reach the numbers and probably like make a difference with the corruption mm -hmm. back home. So and bring awareness and to and the bring situation. And bring awareness to the situation mm -hmm. that's going on in the Bahamas for, for real. So you know yeah without getting into because i know like situations like this can be very emotional and very personal but would you like to tell us a little bit about what led up to your brother being murdered by the police um well basically i still don't know why they actually killed him but basically so the story is available online you could check out azario major killing in the bahamas and you'll find like all the news reports we was on the news like crazy yeah so what happened was we got this call. My parents called me at like 12 something in the night. Mm -hmm. And they was like, um, the police just called. Because they be calling me for everything. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? They're like, they can fix it or whatever. So they called me like 12. They like, oh, the police just pull up. And they was like, Azaria was in an incident. And pop, pop, pop. Mm -hmm. And we need to come to the station tomorrow at 12. Yeah. Me knowing the streets is like, okay, the police kill her. Period. Like, from they woke me up. And I had COVID at the time. So they woke me up and I was like, okay the police killed my brother let me get on the road and find out where he got killed what's going on so my parents started looking online um for places he would frequent like what shootings happened that mm -hmm. night 
So the same night, I, I was able to find, like, where he was shot. I was able to see the crime scene. I saw that there was no bullet shots in the direction of the, the building. Um, I went on the streets, talked to a few, like, we call them Joneses. Mm -hmm. Joneses, like, I guess they call them bums and stuff over here. Mm -hmm. So I talked to a few Joneses. They be on the road and stuff. So I just pull up on the corner, like, my little spliff, and I was like, yeah, 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 but that shooting, what happened? Da, da, da. So they tell me, like, you know, it was a certain amount of shots. So I was able to find out everything. I went to all the police stations, went to the to the hospital, found out his body never even made it to the hospital, stuff like that. So I had already known it was corrupt, like something was off. Mm -hmm. um, the next day, I went to the police. My parents wasn't strong enough. I didn't find out like it was actually him, like confirmed mm -hmm. until about 10 a.m. the next morning. Oh, no. So my parents didn't want to go. So I went to talk to them. I spoke to the head of CDU. Um, CDU was our police department. So I spoke with them and Things was just fishy, and I just told them, like, they was trying to tell me there was an exchange of gunshots, not like there was no exchange, because I had already basically researched the whole, like, the whole... Yeah, like, I'm really asking you just for you to see... Just to see you what lie. you're going to say. Yeah. They started lying, a whole bunch of things. Started coming out. Um, his phone wasn't with his belongings. The car, um, the car, um, we couldn't find the car. They was like, they don't know what the car is. We went to the rental place where he rented the car from. Car is there. They about to work on the damn car. How did, oh wow. You see what I'm saying? So we had to buy the car, store the car, bring in an investigator from the States. Um, shout out Mr. Pomerines. He came down, he used to, he trained like the California Police Department. Mm -hmm. He's a specialist in pathology, um, crime scene reconstruction, ballistics, um, yeah. trajectory and all that stuff. Yeah. So he came in, did his investigation and then we found out, um, you know, it was, it, the cameras, we got camera footage. Camera footage started to show that he, um, you know, the police that actually shot him, checked the camera, did all of this, put on gloves, bop, bop, bop. And then we ended up finding out in coroner's court, because we won coroner's court. Coroner's court is like when you find out whether it was a justified killing. Oh, wow. So we won that it was unjustified, but they haven't That's, charged them as yet. Well, and it's been how many years? This happened, we actually found out on my birthday, May 24th, was when we won coroner's court. In what year? Um, that was last year. Okay. Because he was killed 2021. So by last year, May, mm -hmm. um, we found out. So it's been about a year. It's been about a year plus, and they haven't charged the police as yet. Um, yeah, we found out there was two sets of shootings. It's a whole, the case goes so deep. Yeah. It goes so, so deep as far as, you know, the cover up, just being in there and yeah. seeing like them coming in and having one story and our investigator got the facts. And it's like just such a contradiction of what really happened based on the ballistics and the training that is in the States when it comes to investigation mm -hmm. compared to what they say in, in the Bahamas. Yeah, so it's not adding up. It wasn't adding up. Okay. So for people who want to support you and people who want to see it through that your brother gets justice, what can they do to support you or where can they find you or where can they get updates? Well, they can definitely, like, once you follow me on my Instagram, at the real it's Dia. Mm -hmm. um, I have everything pinned on my Instagram. Um, you can just continuously, justice was our, justice was our. We're about to, like, start petitions and stuff like that, but mm -hmm. we're trying to move a little careful because um, we want, we don't want it to come to a, a point where it's like we, Put the case in a detriment because of you know what i mean so we're waiting on the lawyers go ahead and once yeah. we get to go ahead so once you follow me you could keep in touch with like everything and you will see everything that's going on and how much ever chance you get just justice for zario tag the royal bahamas police force in the bahamas go on facebook because that's where the behemoths be at so you go on facebook you could repost the video there's a video there that was remade of the clip so it shows like how the police checked the cameras did all of this so you can yeah. repost that justice for zario Tied the Royal Bahamas Police Force and let them know that we're paying attention to this mm -hmm. in different parts of the world. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so how does it feel to be the only girl from the Caribbean that was actually casted <laughs> to be on Baddies Caribbean? Because everybody was like, where's all the Caribbean girls at? And like, Dia's the only one representing. So how did it feel? Like, uh, It was, for me, I was happy when I got there, but... I think a lot of people misunderstand what I say when I say culture shock, um, because naturally, is we got two different cultures. Like yeah. you see what I'm saying? Two very different cultures when it comes to even if there's a girl that lives here and your parents are from, 
the Caribbean mm-hmm. or this, that, and the third. You grew up in the States. Mm-hmm. It's so different. It's Listen, I I literally lived in Africa, so trust me, I understand. You know how big principles are. Africans are very similar to us as well. Yes, the culture is very the strict. Is also, one thing I feel like that I deal with is like when you're born in America and you go back to Africa to live there or vice versa, people, you never really fit in anywhere. It's like people back home in Africa will look at you like, oh, you're the girl from America. Mm-hmm. And, and people in America will look at you like, oh, the girl from Africa, the girl's from the Caribbean. Mm-hmm. So it's like you're always kind of like in the middle, you yeah. know? So how has that like been for you adjusting? It was a lot for me, like to be honest, spiritually and emotionally, it was a lot. And I think that's why the fans didn't get as much. When they look at my profile and stuff, they see all this personality. And they like, you know, they wish they had gotten more out of me and stuff like that. But I'm already a guarded person, especially considering what I was going through. And I didn't realize I was really rude because I was working so much and he's working on the case. I didn't realize like how mentally it affected me. When I watched the show, I see how much weight I had put on. I didn't realize like I was going through so much. Um, And that's why I always like give my love to Tinker and Slim, to be honest, because they recognize that some they recognize something was 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 off was off with yeah. me like they Tinker asked me she like you okay mentally and this was like two days in yeah you see what I'm saying it's a lot of pressure it's a it lot was, of pressure yeah, guys. it was a it's lot. not easy it's not no like and I felt like I I felt like I didn't fit in anywhere but I'm also not the person that tries to fit